Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how to make stained glass windows. Your first step after you conceive an idea of what you would like is to make a line drawing of your image. This is making the eye to the pelican. See right here. I'm using these craft glasses and I chose one that's kind of yellowish clear about the right size. Here you see my daughter adding a dolphin to the stained glass picture. You want to use this foil tape and it's self-adhesive. Peel the paper back Wrap this trying to make sure that some foil will be on both sides that it cups around the bevel on that glass. Now I'm lapping the foil about a quarter of an inch. Pressing the edges down. And then I take the end of a pen or the edge of the Sharpie and I'm smoothing all the edges and making sure it's in good contact with the glass. both edges then. Alright, now you can see through this and what I want to do is put an iris in the center and the way I'm going to do that is fingernail polish. A little bit of this. Now because the front is convex, it magnifies, so this center area here, I'm going to make the dot relatively small. This will dry fairly quick. Okay, there's the back. Now when you flip it over, it enlarges. Use a sheet of paper. You can see a ghost image through there. Trace it. Cut the image out. Place the image on the glass that you're going to work. Trace it and now what you want to do is cut on the inside of this line. When you cut the glass, you hold your glass cutter in this method and put some light oil on the wheel. Wear safety glasses because the glass will throw some shards and you want to start your cut from the edge and you run the cut all the way until it comes off the edge of the glass. And press, you want to hear a continuous sound like ripping a piece of tissue paper. Then do the same. Now with this bend here, it's not going to come completely out like that one. So I'm going to run this cut off and it'll be made in two passes. So same thing, you start at the edge. I'm going to stay on the inside 
of the line. I'll start the curve and run it off. So it ended here. And I'll do the same thing again. Grab on both sides of the line. Apply pressure. And then this one, I'll have to finish the cut, starting at the very outside edge. Listen for the and you right there you see a little bit of glass chipped off. Then we clean the oil off, put the foil, and secure it. And cut one piece at a time. And when you make your next pattern, you're going to be slightly off on lines. You want to be just a tad under so that the pieces will uh, join. And if there's any gaps when you're leading, the lead will fill those gaps. Oil tape. Try to center. Cut this about a quarter inch over excess so that it will lap and lock on to the beginning edge. Okay, now you want to start folding this down. The foil will stretch, and I do on the concave area first. Once you have that done, then rub your tool. Be real gentle, the glass is real fragile. This piece is ready to be soldered in or soldered together. The second piece is going to be this one. It's going to be the same gray. What you want to do is slide your paper underneath and make sure that this is positioned properly and we trace around this and looking for our ghost image and we cut that out this to our glass and you want to position it where you can get and you can flip it over it doesn't matter you can apply a glue stick this just one drop is all you need and you don't need to do this every time but if you 
let too much time in between, there won't be any oil on it. Okay, starting at the edge, I'm going to cut the piece off first. You may consider buying a pair of braking pliers. That would be much easier than using your hands and uh, much less chance of cutting your fingers. And right there you see when you get to the end you usually break off. Now this may snap right there. And if you have edges like that, you can nibble a little bit away. And that's what this is for. Right like that. When you're working a large area, I like to have the pieces tacked together so that they don't keep shifting on me. And what I'm doing here, I'm going to cut this one piece. This is a simple one. And what you do is take a sheet of paper, slide it in. Okay, now I can see the ghost image showing through there. So I'm going to trace the image and go along this edge once you have that image traced then you want to cut it out and your scissors you can smooth the lines out there's some waves in that edge that it's butting up against and the Scissors will straighten that out. After you cut it out, test fit. See if it's the way you want it. And we're going to attach it onto the glass that we're going to use. And I'm going to use <clears throat> what's in the foreground. I'm going to use the darker pieces, so I'll attach it onto this. Use the glue stick, put some of the glue stick on there, and position this where you would like it. Now this edge is square, and this will save me from having to cut that edge. And any time that I'm doing a long curve, I don't like to break it. I like to, a continuous cut. So what I'm going to do is rough cut this out. Okay, one drop of oil. Don't need excess. Okay, I can go along this edge. Missed the edge slightly and pop it off. Cutting a pattern. I put a drop of oil on the wheel. I'm going to start at the thin end. I'm going to feel with the roller right where the pattern is. Pressing down. Start at the edge. 
I'm putting my two fingers near where the score mark is and I'm going to push with my thumb and pulling apart and it runs the crack the whole length. <clears throat> when covering the glass you need to go around the perimeter and this tape is has adhesive on the one side. I like to start at the point and center like that. Bend that over the point so that kind of holds it. And now we need to sight down both edges or have a good eye and keep that same distance, spot checking both sides, making sure that you're staying even. Don't drag your hands this way. These edges are razor sharp. That's a good way to get a nice slice. Once the foil's on, it softens those edges. Checking both edges. And when you come to the end, even that up. And right here you want to snip it off. about a quarter of an inch excess so that you have a tab that you can fold. Okay, now what you want to do is smooth the outside edges and I use my Sharpie. Go around the perimeter. Now you want to start folding the edges. And what I do is I use my thumbnail and drag my thumbnail over. These corners you want to tuck in. Fold like you're folding a Christmas wrapping on those corners. Make it nice and tight. And actually what you're doing when you fold this over and you have an arc this way, <clears throat> You're actually compressing the copper as you're folding. See right in there in that corner, folded that in, tuck those down, and go around, same, the whole perimeter this way. Push a little at a time, use the nail to push it down. Fold the corners neatly, do the second side, same way tucking the corners or folding the corners making the corners neat. You don't want to leave a little gap because the solder will beat away from the tape and it'll leave a little pit mark. Once that's done then take this and smooth and I push from the outside edge inward when I go down these in the corners same way from the outside, push inward. Then do the other side, same way. Okay, now that's ready to solder. For fine detail work, you can use a Dremel with a diamond tip grinding blade. You can even grind a hole through the glass like I did for the eye on the alligator head. When soldering your project, make sure all the pieces are in proper location. Uh, you want to use a soldering iron that is large enough to hold heat. Uh, a small iron for soldering electronics is not containing enough uh, heat in the tip of the iron. You want to use a wet sponge uh, that is used for cleaning the tip of the iron. 
and then you need to apply flux to all the copper foil. The best flux to use is a liquid flux. I didn't have use of that. I'm using a paste that's water soluble so it'll be easy to clean after it's done soldered. You need to be using an acid flux and not a resin flux. Clean the tip of the soldering iron, wiping it off with the sponge and then applying solder to it. Apply solder at uh, points of contact. This is called tacking the uh, pieces of glass together. Once it's tacked, everything will be held. Once it's held together from the tacking, then we can run solder down the copper foil seams. I find it best to apply a dab of solder to the tip of the iron to make a drop and then that tip is holding that solder until I make contact uh, at the point where I want it attached. Soldering the foil seams, apply the solder to the iron at the seam and drag the solder iron with the solder uh, feeding into it down the whole length of the foil seam. This is copper sulfite and what it's doing is it's putting a patina on the lead and what I did to get this copper sulfite because of where I live there's not a lot of stores around so I went to the feed mill. They sell copper sulfite in a powder and I just mixed up about a tablespoon of it. It's probably much more than what I needed and uh, they sell the copper sulfite for uh, putting in ponds to kill algae which um, I think you need other ways to do that controlling algae uh, some people are buying this also to throw in their stoves to get rid of the creosote and I always would just burn a, a hot fire the onset of a building my fires and that always burned the creosote that might have been in there burned it out. So you put this on, put it on both sides, let it work until it uh, gets to your desired color and uh, wash it off. Now, I, what I did was I cleaned this with uh, soap to get the flux off. Uh, the best flux to use is a liquid. I didn't have it, so I used a paste. It's a water-soluble paste. And uh, then I buffed it up with fine steel wool and soap and uh, that smoothed uh, any little uh, rough spots on the copper, or not the copper, on the solder. Knocked high spots down and it also cleaned it so that this can work with the lead and put that patina. This is throwing a uh, copper tent over top of the lead. And you can see right in there. In a matter of minutes, it's putting years of oxidation and coloration, that patina. 
the outside edge will be sitting in a wooden frame. I put copper or I put solder on all exposed lead and what's that, what that is doing is it's giving it a little more structure and support and not relying on the copper foil adhesive to hold on to the edge of the glass. After I do this, I'll turn it over and do the back side. And then mount it in its frame. And it's good to go. There you can see the copper. Copper patina. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.